Hey guys, JC here, and here is another end of the year flight controller review. I'll be covering the X Racer F303 version 2.1 as well as 3.1. As always, you can look in the top right of your screen or description below for links to other helpful videos as well as my other reviews. At this time of me recording this video, the 2.1 is selling for $20 and the 3.1 is selling for $30. Uh, now there are actually quite a bit of differences between these two flight controllers. I know they look very similar, they almost look identical, but uh, let's talk about the differences and that will help you determine which one would be best for you. They both have F3 processors. Neither one of them have built-in voltage regulators, meaning you will have to power these with an external 5 volt source, either from linear ESCs or uh, an external 5 volt regulator from say like a PDB with a 5 volt regulator built in, something like that. Uh, to get voltage in your telemetry, uh, just like many other flight controllers that don't have the built in voltage regulator, they have added in the VBAT pins, which are located here. On the very first X Racer, uh, the version 1, they did not have VBAT pins. And that was almost the demise of the X Racer flight controllers because uh, that turned many people off. Of all the things you can see in your on-screen display and telemetry, voltage is probably the most important and that's why nobody really liked the version 1 but you know you no longer have to worry about that because ever since version 1 they've added in feedback pins. They both use the CP2102 drivers and uh, one thing I have to say about that is if you don't know uh, because of the F3 processors you do get three UART ports and here you have UART number one. Uh, just like I say with any other board with a CP2102 driver, uh, the UART number one is always tied into the USB, meaning if you have a device connected to UART one and you plug in a USB and go in a beta flight or clean flight, then the device and your computer will both be trying to talk to the flight controller at the same time, and that's going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, beta flight or clean flight will either shut down completely or sometimes your settings don't save uh, a, a bunch of random glitches so my advice is if you must connect something to UART 1 disconnect it before you go into beta flight or clean flight uh, if possible I would just try to use uh, UART number 2 and UART number 3 as well as uh, the soft circle ports speaking of that uh, like I said they both have three UARTs UART 1 is located here, UART 2 here, and it doesn't have a, you won't see UART 3 on a diagram, but if you look here, this is your S-Bus pin on both of them, and uh, the S-Bus pin is actually UART number 3 receive. So even though you may not see three UARTs, they're there. As far as soft serial ports, the version 2.1 has two soft serials. Uh, soft serial number 1 is located on channels 5 and 6, Soft Serial 2 is on channels 7 and 8. On the version 3.1, you only have one Soft Serial, and it's on uh, channels 5 and 6. Now going back to the CP2102 driver, like I said, they both use that, but the 2.1 uses the I squared C form of communication, where the 3.1 uses SPI. SPI is much faster than I squared C. And what this means for you is if you plan on using one shot 125 ESCs, then the 2.1 will work for you, but if you want to use anything faster than one shot 125, like one shot 42, multi shot, or the new D shot, then you want to look into the 3.1. The uh, reason for this is because uh, with the 2.1, personally, I wouldn't set the gyro update frequency past 4 kilohertz, and then for the PID loop frequency with one shot 125, I would set it to 2 kilohertz. With the 3.1 and it having SPI, you can set the gyro update to 8 kilohertz as well as the ESCs. Uh, you can, or you can set the ESCs to 8 or 4, wherever you want. I'm not talking down on one shot 125 though. I, I still use one shot 125 on half of my builds, so it's there is very little difference between 125 and multi shot. Uh, that, that's just what I think personally, but it is better, no doubt. It's it's still better. You just have to ask yourself if it's uh, worth 10 more dollars, basically. Version 2.1 uses the MPU 6050, where the 3.1 uses the MPU 6000. They both have dedicated LED pins, uh, which is something different from, say, like a NACE 32, where it's not like that at all. Uh, long explanation, but this is a good thing. 
They also both have dedicated buzzer pins located here. The 2.1 has eight input channels for a for PWM receivers. So if you have a PWM receiver, you may want to look into the 2.1 because the 3.1 does have it can accept P, uh, PWM receivers, but you only get six channels. So if six channels is not enough for you and PWM receivers is all you have, then the 2.1 might be something worth looking into. Now they both can accept PPM receivers on channel number one signal pin, as well as S bus receivers, like I said, on the S bus pin here, which is also UART number three receive. Neither one of these have that uh, dedicated spectrum satellite receiver port that looks something like this. Uh, but you can still use spectrum receivers on these flight controllers. Uh, just all right, so basically the middle pin is your ground. All these pins right here on the edge are ground. All of these are ground. Then this pin here is always 3.3 volts. So on both of these flight controllers, this tiny little pad here is your 3.3 volt power source. So you would just solder your power wire onto that pad. And then your signal pin is the same thing as the UART number three receive. So you would just place your signal wire on the same S bus pin. And there you go, you've got your satellite spectrum satellite receiver working. As far as storage, they both have 16 megabytes of internal flash memory, which uh, to today's standard really isn't that much, but I will say that for me personally, I think 16 megabytes is fine. It's much better than the two megabytes of the NACE32 or the uh, Seriously Dodo flight controllers. Uh, two megabytes is, is, that's really nothing, but I mean, you're getting eight times more uh, flash storage. So it's not as good as an SD card slot and having four gigabytes, but 16 will do. On the 3.1, whenever you plug in a USB cable, it will provide five volts of power through all of these middle uh, power pins, which means that it will power your receiver whenever you plug in the USB cable, which is a great thing because this means you don't need a LiPo battery. Sometimes I like to create my channels or test the receiver or do anything receiver related, and it's just a hassle having to find a LiPo battery and plug it in just to do all that. Uh, now on the 2.1, none of these middle pins will get that 5 volt power source except for this pin right here on the very top. It's the same pin right next to your S bus pin. Uh, you will get 5 volts out of that pin. So if you use a S bus receiver, that's going to be no problem. If you use a PPM receiver or a PWM receiver, just remember you, you know, you'll run your signal wires here for the PPM or all throughout here for PWM. Just remember to place your power wire on this pin. Now this is something I mentioned for all the flight controller reviews I do. Uh, these don't have firmware for iNav. If you don't know, iNav is almost exactly like Betaflight or CleanFlight, but it's more GPS related. It has a lot more GPS features and options and settings. Uh, this is just my guess, but I would assume there is no firmware available for these because these don't have a built-in barometer or magnetometer, or which is a compass. Uh, but hell, I mean, these are called the X-Racer flight controllers. These were made to be like the bare minimum that you need for uh, acrobatic flying and racing. You don't need a barometer when you are racing or doing acrobatic flying. Uh, there's absolutely no point in that. So they're trying to keep everything to a minimum. And hell, even my flight controllers that have a barometer and magnetometer, I disable them just to keep my CPU load as low as possible, uh, which is going to increase you know performance. So why spend extra money for something that you're not going to use anyway, right? As far as the quality, I have I haven't had any problems with any of these flight controllers. Like with every flight controller out there, you know, there's guys that's fried every flight controller you can imagine, but like I always say, nine times out of ten, I really think it's user error. I've never fried one of these. I've never had uh, any of the pins just stop working, any of the sensors, the gyro. Uh, I've been flying these for a while and not one problem yet. Now time for my final thoughts. I think that, I think these are good flight controllers. 
Um, I mean, if you add everything up between the quality and uh, just keeping everything as simple as possible for acrobat flying and racing, uh, I mean, they, they do what they're intended for. The 2.1 I'm not crazy about because, uh, like I said, if, if you want to use anything faster than one shot 125, then you, you're you almost forced to use the 3.1. Now the 3.1 is $30, so, I mean, if you compare it to other flying tours in that price range, um, I'd say it does pretty good at, at $30. I think that's a good price point. If you just want something that just works and you don't care about having the best performance you don't care about none of that you just want something that works good for a good price then the 2.1 is probably for you I mean hell anything is better than a Nace 32 I hate this thing with a passion and I mean it's only a, a couple dollars cheaper so I would I would gladly spend those few extra dollars for the 2.1 just to have the F3 processor and good quality I know it's not going to fry like the Nase is known for but that does it guys uh, like I said overall I think these are really good fly controllers you will just have to decide on which one would be best for you and which one is best suited for your build and your flying style so thanks for watching and uh, check out this playlist I will see you again soon